Left 4 Dead. It's one of those games I have a real love-hate relationship for. On the one hand, it's a brilliantly designed four-player shooter that emphasizes survivability and teamwork through its mechanics. The number of zombies is way too much for one player, but enough for say two and up to four makes it pretty easy, encouraging players to watch each other's backs. The special zombies, besides the spitter, trap at least one player, and again, it encourages teammates to help each other out and stick together. The spitter itself is a bit of a tricky zombie because it tries to hold or separate players apart, making it really hard for them to accomplish that fundamental goal of sticking together as a team. The small carrying capacity makes each player unable to defeat zombies from every range and angle, so it's encouraged that each player takes a different playstyle so that they can cover each entryway to every encounter. Items take a lot of time to use and are recommended only to be used in relief sections or with careful backup from other players. Maps are designed so that you'll reach certain points referred to as gates, where you have to hold out at a point with tons of zombies coming at you, building a huge wave of tension as you fight for your life. And finally, the AI director, as they refer to it in-game, is a really great way of making the whole experience not feel repetitive by dynamically sending zombies and items according to the player's challenge demands, rather than just kind of strictly dictating it by the level design. Also, Francis is hilarious. I hate stairs. On the other hand, the game fundamentally kind of gets something wrong thematically. In JonTron's top 10 overrated games, he put Left 4 Dead on there mainly for the reason that the guns rip through the zombies and it feels like you're machine gunning through cotton candy. And I kind of agree with that view a bit. This is a bit of a subjective view, but for the game all about tension, survivability, vulnerability, the horror setting, everything about that, you think it's kind of weird that zombies die really quickly in like one or two bullets, and they don't have that much weight, they just kind of fall over because of it. So like you just shred through zombies like paper, and then the specials, they feel like bullet sponges because they don't really visually react to your bullets. So it doesn't really help that in Australia for Left 4 Dead 2 we got a dumbed down version which makes it even less satisfying to take down zombies. And I know a few months back they just re-released the game with the violence back in but it's, that point still kind of stands a bit. And I'm not saying it's a bad game, like seriously Left 4 Dead is very, very good fun but there's just this fundamental nagging with the controls and the violence and stuff. I'm not a big fan of it. Now I know what you're thinking. You just spent three minutes raving about Left 4 Dead in a video about Payday! But really, let's let's compare Left 4 Dead with Payday the Heist. <clears throat> Payday Left the Heist Dead is a four-player four cooperative, cooperative shooter in which the team must tackle objectives to proceed through the map, map taking down dozens of zombies and occasionally special enemies, enemies come, come out which require additional cunning and expertise to defeat. I'm not going to spend too much time on Payday the Heist purely because a lot of its good mechanics come straight out of Left 4 Dead. The Taser and Cloaker special units try to trap a player and require teammates to come help them up. You only get a few weapons to bring with you, so it's best if everyone takes something different. Things like drills take time to fix, leaving you vulnerable unless someone watches you. And there's the obvious gate points in the level design, and also the enemies come in a rather dynamic wave structure, where the enemies get tougher and tougher as the level goes on. But there's one fundamental difference between Left 4 Dead and Payday the Heist. Left 4 Dead is a horror game. Payday the Heist is an action game. Whereas Left 4 Dead had the sense of gloom and inevitable demise through its graphics, music, and overall mechanics, Payday the Heist is an action movie from start to finish. Each character has a clear personality expressed in their shouts, they yell at each other when their plan doesn't come to fruition, and, most importantly, the game makes you feel like an action hero rather than a survivor through the mechanics. Tasers, while they do stun a player, still let you shoot, though inaccurately, and can be taken out single-handedly by really pro players. Bulldozers, the equivalent of the tanks, have a clear weak point, and those who prepare an attack on them can take them down easily. Your health is now an armor shield system, rather than a flat health style, allowing one to take quick movements and actions without suffering consequences, and the levels are designed around completing multiple goals at the same time, rather than trying to proceed as a group. So the level Diamond Heist is a great example of this, as it requires the players to hack three security boxes placed all around the level, requiring the team to split up and take care of themselves. The level Undercover requires players to scout planks of wood through the entire level and place them at various points inside the building. Oh, and the soundtrack is amazing. It's really cool how the music itself goes soft during the break between the waves, and then it builds up as the wave approaches, and then just lets it all out when the wave begins. Like, it's really amazing sound design, and it's something that games these days 
completely forget about. Cops are still rather weak, like the zombies were in Left 4 Dead, but the context is different. You're not supposed to fear the cops, you're supposed to feel awesome because you're mowing down the police by the dozens. The game wants you to do that. That's the biggest difference between Left 4 Dead and Payday. They play similarly, but by changing the context of your actions, it can change the whole sense of motive and thus the enjoyment for the game. As a minor note, the DLC model is also really nice. It gives those who own the DLC a new progression line, new weapons, and a couple of new levels, but it also still lets your friends who may not own the DLC to join you in those levels. They don't get the cool weapons, they don't get the progression, but they get a taste of what they can get, which is really good. Like, it doesn't lock you out of content, it just kind of shows you what you can get, which is really nice. Following the success of the first game, a sequel was released in August 2013. The publishers even noted that the game had regained all the money used in development purely through the pre-orders. Now I'm not one to encourage pre-ordering games, but at the same time, I have to kind of applaud the smaller studio for making a successful game in this towering market of higher budget titles. I didn't get the game immediately at launch, but I did grab it at Christmas that year and I didn't like it at first. That action movie feeling was lost on me. You weren't modern day Robin Hoods, only stealing from those corrupt and unjustified in the first place, like some guy printing money in his basement. You were robbing a jewelry store because someone hired you to do so. The characters don't really yell at each other anymore, heists are shorter and segmented into days, making the whole thing feel a little bit less eventful. In Payday 1, the slaughterhouse level took place in an apartment block, moved into a meat storage area, went through a shipping and packaging area, went around to the back to a junkyard. And that's in one level. That felt like a huge journey, a trek. Comparatively, in Payday 2, the level Rats takes place in a house for day one, then the second day, after a loading screen takes place in an apartment area, and then the third day takes place on a bridge. It's still got variety, but just by being separated by loading screens, it kind of removes that sense of scale. Also, the music isn't really unique to each level anymore. Suddenly I couldn't go, oh, that's the first world bank theme anymore. It's more like, oh, dude, that's the level that goes bom, 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 bom. It's still good music. It's just not as identifiable because it just plays randomly on each level. Leveling goes really slow. Like, really slow. <laughs> you get your first few levels pretty quickly, but then the pacing goes way out after level 40 or 50. And the worst part, skills require in-game money to respec. You cannot swap between your skill sets without saving up for it after a few heists. If you didn't like your skills, you were stuck with your crappy skill tree for a while. The level select is also kind of weird, you can't exactly choose what level and difficulty you want to play, you just kind of have to choose what's being offered at the moment, wait a while, or spend in-game money just to get what level you want to play. So say goodbye to that skill respect then. Also it's kind of weird why the game doesn't even have a quick reset level function in case you botch up something like the new stealth mechanics, you just kind of have to stick with it or fail the level. And finally, they replace Hoxton with someone else, he was my favourite character. I didn't like the new replacement. I mean, they patched old Oxen back in, but I was stuck with that for like a year. But then it kind of dawned on me, Payday 2 isn't really trying to be like Payday 1. They changed the whole theme to adaptability. And that made the new mechanics work. Like, really, it made all this stuff make sense. I initially didn't like the changes they made to the game because it kind of went against what I enjoyed about the first game. But once I noticed the theme wasn't being an actual movie star, it was about being a robber, having to deal with the variations and challenges of executing these well-prepared plans. The whole game is about adapting to the random elements. So let's go back through what I just, like, listed. The whole shorter heist thing is a warm-up to the longer multiple day heists. The day system is used as a warning system to newer players who are unaware of the game's mechanics and systems. The one day heist on jewelry store, or the bank heist, they look way more appealing to start the game with than a three day heist fire starter. It also separates each level's concepts a bit more. So in Rats, the first section ends in a getaway from a tight location, the second day changes dramatically depending on what you did in the first day. The third day is thus another outcome result of the second day. Each day is used to demonstrate the differences and outcomes of the previous days, and the players need to adapt on what they decide or end up doing. That and also it's a really easy way to mask a loading screen. <laughs> the music isn't unique to the levels, because the whole game's concept about adaptability goes with the idea of using what you are given. You're listening to any song because you're expecting anything to happen. 
Your plan adapts depending on what you're up against, and the music is a great way to demonstrate this change. The slow leveling is to give a player quick access to the immediate differences between the skill trees, but a slow trickle into the smaller perks that come with those skills. So for example, the technician tree presents the players with trip mines and gives the player benefits into using those as well as perks for fixing items such as drills, but then later on, using trip mines, you can use them to blow open saves or switch to sentry guns. They're locked off until the player can demonstrate their ability to use trip mines for a long time, or at least adapt to the playstyle that that offers. The money system is used to slow down the amount of stuff players get, and also lets them decide what they should be rewarded with. A lot of later up weapons cost buttloads of money, taking mobile heists to even save up for those, and the player needs to decide on whether they should upgrade their current weapon, get a new one, buy more skills, reset what they're specializing in, etc. So at the end of each heist, you get a weapon mod, a material, or a mask or something, and the mask system is also a great way to personalize each player, give them a unique look, and the mods, the weapon mods, they're great for letting the player specialize in what they've been given or what they've stuck with. So they can't directly choose what they're getting, again, they just need to adapt whether they should use it or not. And the lack of a reset button in the heist is a surefire way to make players care about their actions. Stealth is used in many levels as an alternative to going loud, however, few skills make stealthing significantly easier. There's a skill tree that's all about silently picking doors and safes and jamming signals in case a security call for backup, but they don't really necessarily help you move around undetected. The armor system is also a nice way to demonstrate this. Before the heist, you can choose how much armor you'll wear into the level. More armor means you're slower, and you can be spotted easier in stealth, but you'll also be able to take more hits before you start taking permanent damage should you blow your cover and go loud. Those who wear less may be able to stealth easier, but they're at a disadvantage should the alarms go off. The lack of reset button makes players consider the consequences of what armor they decide and forces them to adapt to what happens. The game is also a lot more heavier than before. Guns are loud and have massive amounts of recoil. Enemy numbers are smaller, but they do take a lot more beating than before. Blur and depth of field are used to encumber the player, but the player is also given enough strength to manage a group of enemies by themselves, again encouraging splitting up and taking on tasks individually. Payday 2 is a more concise game in terms of its mechanics. You're not memorizing levels per se, you're just kind of memorizing skills. Bag carrying is a major component of the game, and it's presented in a non-obtrusive way in pretty much every level. For a few levels, you need to transport several more bags than each person can hold at once, and this requires each player to manage a portion of the journey themselves. The most efficient way to transport bags is to split the journey into legs, having each player move the bags across each section or quartile of the path. It's an extremely organic way of getting the players to assume and devise roles for each other. And I don't want to talk about the updates to the game too much, especially because over the last year, Payday has received buttloads of DLC, weapon packs, I don't even know. So all the mechanics, they are being tweaked and sorted each month. Uh, but the dentist missions, they're really cool because they include something called pre-planning, where the players decide where to put things such as ammo bags, medic kits, possibly take out a guard during stealth. It's a really, really nice and direct way to describe how a player's planning can go differently to what they need to do in the scenario. The most well-prepared players still need skill to execute their plan effectively, requiring both logical thinking and quick reflexes to adapt to what happens in the level. And that's what Payday 2 is. It's an organic experience of what it's like to be a robber and adapt to things. I started this video explaining what Left 4 Dead was and showing how Payday the Heist shared so many elements with that game. Payday 2 takes some of the more unique aspects of Payday 1 and then breaks off into its own organic experience. It still has a couple of, as, I, as I'm going to coin the term, Left 4 desk features, but then it does enough to break from that style and present something new and unique. It's one of the more underrated titles of 2013 in my opinion, and over time, it's just getting more and more recognition for its originality and sheer excellence in this design execution. It does have the most popular official Steam group, so that's a testament to its success. Payday 2 is just kind of one of those games that makes me think that smaller studio titles are the future of video gaming. Not only for having innovative ideas, but also just for making some of these ideas commercially successful, which is what kind of the industry cares about. But then they added John Wick to the game! Sellouts! Ugh. 
Thanks for watching this video, guys. Stay tuned. There will be more stuff later on. I promise. I want to know that Payday 2 has some amazing developers that are still making more and more content for the game, even to this day. A lot of the stuff I've mentioned in this video has been addressed in games, such as the experience system that's been lightened up a bit, a vote reset feature has been added, there's more pager answering lines so that adds a bit more humor back into the game again, tons of that stuff. Most of this video was just kind of more so telling the story about what the game was initially like at launch and how I kind of initially perceived it when it first came out. And Thank you for following me, following me on this journey of this reminiscent feeling about this. Anyway, do all your stuff. Have a good day if you're watching this at work or something. I'll see you kids later. Bye bye.